Hello and welcome to this Blender 2.63 update tutorial. I want to delete that cube and shift A, add a UV sphere instead and press five and one on the num keypad and zoom in with the mouse wheel. Okay, B mesh means that you can have, which is a new, the new mesh system for Blender, which means that you can have so-called n-gons, which are polygons that have more than four vertices. So that changes things. There's also some improvement and changes to tools, and we just try to go through some of them. Some of them I won't even talk about. So, um, okay, um, shift tab and choose face mode. I would like to create a beak on this here. So I want to make this like a round, round head, like a bird's round head. And first, you know, the delete function has changed. There's a dissolve, dissolve option on it. So if I press X and try to dissolve this, then it says it can't because there's an inclusion in it. So that doesn't work. We'll use dissolve later, but for this, you know, I don't, I would like to just delete those faces. Dissolve is a different type of function actually. So now we have this included here. Then I want to make a circle out of this because I would like to have a circular beak on this bird's head. And then I'll press shift tab and go to edge mode and right mouse and alt to select this loop. And then I can use transform to sphere shift alt s like that. So I just click that menu choice and then I move the cursor and press left mouse button to stick the, the transform. I know there are 16 edges here and I would like to have as many edges on this here. So what I do now is I'll just uh, select all, all of these and press W and subdivide that. So now I have 16 on both. And I also want this one to be round, not square. So then I'll choose these edges, select these edges, Alt Shift, Shift Alt and right mouse click. Press one to look at this from the front, and then I do Shift Alt S just like before, and then move the cursor and click, and then Shift Alt, Alt Shift and right mouse click to select the other loop, and then I'll use Bridge W and Bridge to Edge Loop. So that's moved over here. It's not a part of Loop Tools, which doesn't exist anymore, and instead it's integrated with the specials. So there. and I'll just press the left mouse and uh, control to select this and then E for extrude and like that. And I'm going to do this pretty simple. Press three to look at it from the side, Alt, Shift and right mouse click and uh, scale this down and rotate this. And then deselect those and then scale that down. So I'm just going to make this really simple beak. Then I'll press A to select everything and press W to smooth this and to smooth the mesh and then W and shade smooth. So now we have this smooth mesh. We can look at that through the camera and it looks pretty smooth. Yeah. Next thing, press one A to deselect. I would like to have an eye opening here. So I select these four um, faces and delete those faces and uh, go into edge mode and select that. And then I'll use, um, then using the Alt, Shift Alt S, it may not work so well here because you get you, you get this, it's not quite the way you want it. So press one. And I'll control Z out of that. And then what I can do now is I can use a new tool. I go to edge, no, vertex mode and select a vertex. Press shift V and then click on the edge I want to slide along. So this is the vertex slide. Shift V, just move that to that edge and then click, left click, and then you can move where you want to go. Shift V, okay, try it again. Shift 
V is to activate by kind of hovering over it and click the left mouse button and then you just move the mouse and click it. So right mouse click, shift V, hover over, left mouse click, and then move along that edge. And there you go. And then I would like to have this also a loop. I don't want these corners here. So now we can use another tool uh, or a new tool or actually just an improved tool. The knife existed before. You invoke it by pressing K and then you get this first um, you know, cut wherever your um, cursor is. And then you can move along here and click. And, and then if you want to, you can just pull it out and it's going to just push, put those um, new divisions in there, but you can also go from one and click it. So you can kind of click it and stick it like that. So you can decide exactly where it's going to go. And there. So I'm done there and I press enter. And now I'll new, use another new tool, the J tool, which joins like that. And the, what has happened here is now we have two different faces here. So that just kind of cuts through these two faces, makes an, makes a couple new faces on each side of that uh, edge. So that's very convenient. And I still would like to get rid of these, um, you know, these triangles here. One, two, three, four. And to do that, I'll choose, I'll just select all the edges because I would like to subdivide every one of them. W, subdivide, go to vertex mode. And now these are, you know, end gons. And I would still like to have quads. So what I do is I select these, these uh, um, vertices like this. So we can see that you get all you know, these triangles that I later will convert to quads or actually first to angons and then to quads. So like that. And go to face mode and select all of these triangles. You can actually do that. You can just select this and then you do X and dissolve. So it will turn it into angons. And that may or may not will turn on the subdivision surface modifier to see how this, this works. And I think in the flat, like, okay, that wasn't what I wanted. Sometimes that just gets confused, object mode. And it doesn't look exactly the way I want it. And to make this a, a smoother ring here, I'll choose these vertices and just go ahead and uh, shift V and uh, kind of slide it. And then now I feel comfortable I can actually join these two. Alt M. No, not first. Control C. Alt M at last. There you go. Kind of got a little bit lost there. Sorry. I didn't want the camera in front of us. So this way I can kind of get my ring here smooth, reasonably smooth. Uh, so you can kind of model. This is really the thing that I wanted to get to. Uh, Alt M at last. How you can, with this, you know, this the vertex slide, Shift V, how you can fine tune your mesh just exactly the way you want it. So you can, you know, rem you can maintain that surface that you had, but still change the topology. For instance, in this case, I wanted a more, you know, more of a circular, uh, um, all quad mesh around that opening. Let's see here, shift V and like this, and maybe once more in there. Just gonna do this. 
and I select all of this and then do E for extrude and pull that in. And let's look at this and that looks pretty good. So now we have used the tools that I feel are, you know, really useful. I just want to, or, or that have, you know, importance in terms of my own tutorials in, in the sense that I've used techniques that are not, you know, there anymore. So let's just look at this one here. Uh, we have two faces and a lot of times I've used Alt J to turn two faces into, you know, two triangles into quads. And the, that functionality has, has changed somewhat in the sense that uh, the Alt J function may or may not be successful in, in uh, uh, you know, creating, let's see here, if we can take something, we'll turn this one off. I think I'm pretty sure that, we'll see, we'll just try it where it's not gonna work there. J and face, and if I try, try to do Alt J, yeah, it did. It did work. It was so smooth. This is kind of annoying. Uh, let's try this one then. Um, Alt J. Okay, of course now everything works. It's like there's no problem that I cannot find a place on this mesh where Alt J doesn't work. Let's uh, let's do this. I can just change the mesh around a little bit like that, maybe, and then do this and J and face, and then we'll try this and Alt J. It did work. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I don't know actually how to how to provoke it not to work. Um, okay, that's not going to work, right? For sure. But let's say we take these two and then Alt J and yeah, that didn't work. Okay, there you go. Here we go. I was trying to make this Alt J not work. These two do not want to turn into quads, but with X and dissolve they turn into quads really easily. So that's really the one thing that I've used Alt-J a lot to merge uh, triangles into quads and that may or may not work but with uh, Dissolve it always works unless of course you have you know an inclusion as I showed from the very beginning. So I think this is it for, for these tools. I hope this helps whoever's you know here maybe somebody who's been watching one of my previous tutorials have followed the link here and can kind of get a grasp on how the new B mesh meshes the mesh system and, and improved tools, uh, you know, makes a difference. There is also, I can just mention that there is also um, inset faces and there's also bevel and um, W bevel, there you go. And I haven't used those much. Uh, but those are also new and improved uh, features, so to speak. And bevel is more, you know, not used like that, probably. It's more like uh, something like you have um, uh, uh, shift a, add a cube, go into edit mode, and then you can, you know, select that and W and bevel, and then you get, you know, and you can change the percentage like this. You can kind of get a beveled edge uh, with that. I don't use that a whole lot because uh, of the following reason. Uh, if if you do bevel on this entire thing here, and just uh, lower that down a little bit so you can kind of you want to have a beveled, beveled cube and the turn on the subdivision surface modifier and then we look at that then you can see that there's kind of a you know effect there on the side so um, I'll regret these shift a uh, no that's yep. add a cube and uh, then what the, the method I prefer is to do this W and subdivide 
twice, two cuts, go into edge mode, and then scale X here outward, and the same. So I have to do this in each dimension, scale Z, and scale Y. And then you get this kind of beveling. And uh, if we go to s and uh, smooth and um, well, be not, but at least shade smooth like this, then you get this type of beveled cube. And if we increase that a little bit, and, and adding adding just a material just makes it a lot different. Um, And I prefer this type of beveling because it's very controllable. So now, even if you, so you have to turn on the, the modifier in the added cage to kind of see what's going on. But if you do that, you can, you can actually, you know, you can kind of control exactly how much of a softness you want to that edge. And uh, like this, and it looks, to my mind, really good. It, uh, you know, you can really control the corners, and if you look at it, you know, without the modifier, then you can see that the corners are, you know, there's like a box within the box. So it, it takes more mesh. It, it's more work, but also affords you more control. So I hope this didn't take too long, and I appreciate your listening, and um, talk to you soon. Bye bye.